Look what I got. I'm so excited. Hello. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this beauty. Look at what I got. It's a real piano. I got a piano. I'm so happy about it. Oh my gosh. You have no idea how long this has taken me. So yeah, I finally got my piano. Um, so if you've been watching me for a little while now, you uh, may have heard me mention that I didn't have a piano. I wasn't at that moment in time owning a piano. And I have been without a piano for like over a year now. Um, it just without access to one at all, like not having anywhere to be able to go, to go play a piano. And so yeah, this, this thing has been a long time coming. I initially like wanted to do like a, like an unboxing kind of video with this thing, um, because I thought that would be the best way to kind of show off that this was coming. Um, but I got way too excited and I just opened it on the day of, and then it's been a while since I got it to today when I'm actually recording. So I just figured I'd kind of sit here, share the whole piano with you guys, and so show some nice up close footage of the whole piano and just share share this little life bit with you because it's a, it's an interesting story. I played piano in college and I even got a piano pedagogy degree so I, I do a lot of piano. I've played since I was like three years old. Uh, so not having a piano for the past year has been like absolute torture for me and it's been driving me up the wall and I finally back in like January finally came time to be like I think now is a good time to get a piano because prior to that I had been wanting a piano I like had the model picked out for like a, several like about a year and a half at that point but when I had it picked out I wasn't sure if it was like the right time to get the piano because uh, I, I knew I was probably gonna be moving soon ish and I figured it'd be easier to just move and then get the piano and then other things came up after I moved where I was like, it's not as convenient for me to get the piano. And then finally back in January after having waited forever, I was like, all right, now is the time. But of course it's the Corona right now. And that's affecting basically everything that everybody wants. And the problem with Digital pianos is the same thing that every other technology piece is having right now, and that's there's a shortage of everything. Not to mention the fact that this is like one of the top in-demand pianos that Yamaha has right now, because this is the Yamaha P515 piano. Um, so it's their portable series, but it's like the newest and like top of the line of the portable piano series, because of course I'm very picky about my pianos that I want <laughs> for obvious reasons. So I placed my order back in like January and it was on pre-order because I had been keeping my eye on the pianos for a while and I could tell that like it wasn't going to come back in stock anytime soon for me to just wait for it not to be in pre-order. So I just decided to pre-order it. I pre-ordered it and the guy on the phone told me, oh yeah, it should be back in around like March. March. So I was like, okay, all right, no big deal. I can wait that long. And then I got on the phone with another guy and he was like, oh no, February, totally February. And I was like, wow, oh, okay, wow. I was initially told March. So I guess it's February now. Cool, great. Um, and February rolled around and there's nothing. And he was like, yeah, probably March. And I was like, all right, that's fine. That's what I was initially told. So should have just stuck with March, but no big deal. So then March rolls around and I get another call and they're like, early April. I was just like dying inside. Then early April rolls around and there's no call, but like there's no update either. And I just wait and I wait and I wait and I wait until finally, I was like at the mall the other day and I was on my phone and I was just like scrolling through and all of a sudden I see the email that like it's shipped and I just went, ah! <laughs> okay, I should not make that sound in public, but you get it. 
I like flipped out. I was like dancing all around. I was jumpy. I was giddy. I was, I, I flipped out just internally and externally. So I was so excited that I finally got this piano because it's been forever. And I was also like slowly accumulating it because when I first placed the order, the stand and the pedals were in stock. So if you like watched, I think it's, I think it's in my, the Ikea piano video that I did. Um, that was part of the joke that I made, which was like, oh, I only built the stand and the pedals. And that's because that's all I had at that time. And then the bench that I got came in like early, that's, that came in early April. So when they were like, oh, early April, the bench came in early April, but like that was the only thing that came. And then finally, recently, I just got, I just got this. I feel like I'm gonna do like a little tour here, you know, show, show it off to you guys. And I don't know if you're thinking about this model. I would definitely, so far from what I've played around with it on, it's a good one. It's a really nice one. I guess I'll also talk a little bit about like why I chose this specific piano because um, when I was a piano teacher, because I don't have any students right now, but like I had a students like a year ago or so. And when I had students, like it wasn't, it was a pretty common question for a lot of people to ask like, oh, like what do you look for in a piano when picking out a piano? So I figured, you know, I'll make my own little, kind of why I chose this one in particular. So this is also, you can see all my lovely selection of books here. Um, just my whole repertoire. No, this is not my whole thing. Um, you know, maybe I'll, sh I'll go through the books too. Uh, my, my library is back over there. Uh, mine is mostly borrowed books, so. <laughs> so this is the Yamaha P515, like I said before. And this, the, the P, I think, I think they said stands for portable because this is one of their portable pianos. So the difference between all the different types of pianos is you can have portable pianos like this. They're not officially known as portable, but there's like pianos that are portable that you can carry around. This one is one of those because it detaches from the stand. I can unscrew it, pick it up and carry it around. And that's how that one functions. So that's that's different than like the like Clavinova. They look some sometimes they look like the front half of a grand piano. Those are more like the Clavinova types. Um, or they'll just they'll kind of look like this, but like you can't detach the piano from the stand. And those are meant to be kind of just standalone in a home or maybe on a stage somewhere. But you, they're supposed to be in like a permanent spot. They're not meant to be moved around very well. So like if you were to play a piano at a gig, it's not a good choice of piano. This is a good choice if you want to take the piano anywhere. And then of course you have the keyboards. So the, that's the kind of stuff if you were like in sixth grade music class and you had a keyboarding unit and it was like not the full piano, it was like smaller and I had the DJ button. Like that's a digital piano. Um, sometimes those can be very specialized for specific uses. So like, um, like if you do like music mixing, a lot of people who do like electronic music and just like need something to like enter in notes rather than actually playing a piano. Um, that's what keyboards can be geared towards or people who just like to goof around on the piano. So the, the smaller, not full size ones that are portable that you used in your sixth grade general music class, I tend to advise against those unless you only want to goof around on piano or you have a very specific use for it. Um, however, digital pianos are a, are a good option, obviously. That's what I have. I actually grew up on a digital piano. Uh, calm down, sir. I, I grew up on a digital piano as opposed to an acoustic one, but obviously um, during college, I mostly played on grand pianos. And there's, there's pros and cons to each of them. I wouldn't say one is inherently better than another kind. There are certain types of digital pianos that are not as nice. There's certain types of acoustic pianos that are not as nice. And it depends on your budget and what you like to have. So there's there's not a right and a wrong in that situation. Um, some people like digital pianos because you don't have to tune them. If you have 
uh, acoustic piano, it's recommended that you tune it once every six months. Very few people who own acoustic pianos actually do that, from what I've heard. <laughs> and sometimes it's not that bad, and sometimes you can tell. <laughs> Again, depending on the piano. Basically, the difference between digital and acoustic is mostly based on preference. I got spoiled during college playing on basically only grand pianos, and I really liked the sound that they have to offer, but I also knew I wasn't going to be able to have a grand piano in my house anytime soon. It is a big pain trying to move pianos, and until I get like really settled down to like a house house, Digital pianos are gonna work just fine. Um, so that was kind of my reasoning for picking this portable piano over an acoustic one, space and other issues. But like I said, I really wanted something that was gonna give me a good sound of the grand piano because that's what I was looking for. So I picked this one for a couple more reasons. Um, because this comes with a uh, little uh, three pedal setup. So most uh, portable pianos, you'd have to plug in some kind of pedal. This one did come with its own. Um, it came with a nice one, not the crappy little square one that you get if you buy yourself a portable piano or digital piano and it comes with a crappy little square pedal, get rid of that and get yourself a nice pedal. At least get yourself a good sustain pedal because that square one's gonna slide everywhere. It's gonna be awesome, you're gonna hate it. This one, I wanted one with all three, and this particular model comes with the, you have to buy the home stand, which I wanted because I hate X stands, and it also comes with, you can plug in the pedal, like it's got all three pedals like it would be at a grand piano. And I have played a few songs that have, I've used all three pedals, even the, the middle one. Um, so that was important to me, and this piano comes with that. I also chose this because it has weighted keys. That's a really big, really big feature um, if you're picky about pianos. If, most pianists know this. Um, you, you really should have weighted keys. And this one, like they're pretty decent. This is, like they're pretty decent of, in terms of weightedness. And then it also had a great like sound sampling of pianos. So the other thing that I also get really finicky over is how much does it sound like an actual real grand piano. And this one has like several different piano options. Um, yeah, and then of course it's got like all these other sound options too. I don't tend to play around with those too much, however. However. <laughs> so it comes with, it comes with the, it's, they call it XG sound effects. So it's got all those, the whole library of sound effects and other noises and stuff and they have not changed a bit since I was a kid like I, I don't think they've edited the sound at all <laughs> it's exactly the same um yes oh I gotta change it on that before I forget all right I think I'm also gonna show you guys my little music library so you can see what I play I took out a lot of my stuff and it's, it's, so I'm gonna have to show you what's all in my hand that I took out here. Uh, so this is my lovely little music stand. There's a whole bunch of other junk on here now, but I'll show you what I had. So obviously I got the prelude book. I still have the sticky notes from college of all this stuff I had to practice. Um, uh, this is my Baroque keyboard. I've got a book of Baroque. I did, oh, is it here? Yeah, that's the one I did. I did the Biblical Sonata number four. That was for my senior recital. I did that one. I did the, what was this one? Uh, the Sunken Cathedral. That's the one I did. I did that one for my senior recital. Uh, this one, Scott Joplin. I played this song in eighth grade, so this is probably the only song that's like marked up in here. Um, I had, I never played too much of this, but I played Maple Leaf Rag in eighth grade. It took me forever to learn. Um, this one is like a, I've got lots of, you know, I feel like every pianist has a good collection of books of just like random different pieces from random different eras, you know? So like Traumerei, this is Chopin, there's like Mendelssohn, um, I feel like there's a lot of romantic composers, but it's got like, it's 
Scarlatti and Bach here in the beginning too. So it's, it's a little bit of everything. Um, I have a Sonatina album that is falling apart, as is many other books in here. Uh, if you'll notice, there's like Clementi and Kunau, so those are good classical era composers. They're a little bit on the easier side, so um, a lot of times we'll learn about them, like they're good like pedagogy kind of composers. Um, also, more Debussy, Debussy Reverie. I also played this. I think I played it in high school and college. Um, happened to accidentally play it in both. I think I pulled this one out just for funsies the other day. Um, I played this one a long time ago because this is a pretty easier piece. And then I have this one here too. So this is Tan Dun, a uh, Chinese composer. Very beautiful set, very beautiful set. Who is it? Is it Lang Lang? Uh, yeah, it's Lang Lang. So Lang Lang played this. Um, He's got a re good recording of this. Um, there, It's modern, I think like 1980s, but it gives you lots of WC vibes. So this is just like other stuff I have up here. Um, but this is basically my whole entire library and I've organized it from, I, uh, chronologically basically. So like Baroque stuff is over here. I have like one Baroque thing and it's like Bach conventions. <laughs> and uh, this is classical kind of stuff with romantic and um, going into 20th century, and then kind of comes all my other stuff. So yeah, basically like this section right here, and then all these over here, but like this section right here is the, the stuff I like play for myself. I've got like a whole bunch of other things. Um, what are these? Are these like jazz? Oh yeah, so I've got like jazz books in here. I don't play jazz too often. Um, but I did play jazz piano in like high school and college, so I have it in here. Um, I've got lots of Broadway. I was always like gifted Broadway and musical piano books uh, when I was younger. This is actually, okay, so I've also taught voice lessons as well. This one is not the greatest in terms of piano, but if in terms of like teaching, like if you have like younger kids, you wanna teach them like Disney songs, it's great for vocal stuff. Or oh, I actually really like a lot more for that. Oh, lots of my modern stuff. So I've got some of my easier stuff mixed in. Uh, these are a lot more of my modern stuff. So like, this is a really nice one. It's <laughs> Souvenirs du Chateau. Uh, really nice, that's a pretty good book. Uh, relaxing music, so like, if, I have a couple books of just like, if I need generic sounding piano music. If somebody's like, hey, will you play me music for something? Like, these are the kind of books I grab. Um, mixed in so like this is like some easy books i've got some easy books um and i the reason i have a lot of easy books is also because like i said i did piano pedagogy so like this whole section here is a lot of like pedagogy books so you can see yeah it says like lots of hymns um level two uh some of these are most of these are mine actually right here uh, but then also over here so you've got like Kevin Olson, you know, Joyce Grell, all that kind of stuff. And those are nice to have just to kind of look at and reference. Also, you know, it doesn't actually hurt to have some books that are much easier than actual ability level, just in case you somebody at the last second is just like, hey, will you play piano music for me on this? Or you like, they're good to have sight reading. It's, it's honestly kind of useful to have a whole section of books that are much easier than what you can play. But I also kept, these are also all my, not that section, but like these are also all my old pedagogy books. So I, um, I did the Bastion series as a kid. However, I usually like to give out the Piano Adventures book. That's what I like to do now. Um, I like that a little bit better than Bastion. Bastion tends to go too fast for some kids. It's fine for me. And then obviously, I did a lot of hymns and stuff too, um, cause, well yeah, cause I go to church and one of my piano teachers um, kind of taught me at the, the approach of, hey, if you wanna play for church, and then I did. And then, uh, the last little bit here, I have a Suzuki book, I'm not entirely sure why, um, but then these are my three kind of, I had got these uh, for college, these are my three vocal books that I have. Uh, like I said, I've got a few mixes over there um, but I've got these three that I sang for myself. So I have like a collection of Barber songs that I had to sing. I have 
Uh, this is a good one to have, the Italian songs and arias. Medium high, because I am a soprano. And then this is like, mostly, I think it's all German songs. Schubert, Schumann, Brahms, Wolf and Strauss. Yeah. Uh, but you're, it's a good, 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 good little mix. This is my, I should do a video on this later, but this is my uh, very first, like, piano notebook. So, like, when I was first taking lessons, kind of like the little, uh, the, the, here's what you do. Like, like, oh, here, this is what we're learning in lessons this week. So, like, I should, I should make a video on that and just kind of, like, go through it and read it and just see, like, the changes and everything. I have a guitar book. I had to take class guitar. Uh, I had to take one lesson, one semester of class guitar, which was fun. And then these binders, um, I think this is like teaching binders. That was definitely, yeah, I use that when I like taught some lessons, I had student teaching type of stuff. Um, I actually think, oh, those might actually be uh, for classes that I had, so like music projects. But yeah, that's basically my whole entire collection of music so yeah uh that's my whole little tour i just wanted to make a little quick video this week just kind of showing off my piano and sharing it all with you guys and kind of taking a break from all the research that i'm doing i love doing research but it takes like forever to get it done but anyways i will definitely be back on in the next video doing baroque era music and then classical music i'll probably take at least i'll probably do one more break before i'm finished with this whole series and moving on to something else um have not decided when or what that will be but i will let you know in case um you don't like these in between videos or if you're uh you do like these in between videos i guess <laughs> depending on who you are and which what you are coming to my channel for but yeah so don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of these kind of videos um if you li liked watching my piano video um if you'd like more piano content i can show you more piano content uh, but yeah otherwise i will see you next time goodbye I'm just gonna sit here and play with it. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorites. this a lot too.